Today we're digging into something really fascinating uh, from the ultra running world. Killian Jornet. Exactly. Looking at his prep for the 2025 Western States 100, I mean, arguably the greatest mountain runner ever. For sure. Returning after 14 years. To a race known for heat, less technical ground. Kind of the opposite of his usual playground. Right, it's not his typical terrain profile. So uh, our mission here is to unpack that strategy, right? Pull up the key bits, the practical stuff from the source material. Okay, let's do it. So why come back now? Well, one is just the challenge, you know? Plus the competition there is always stacked, brings out his best. And maybe a desire to learn something new, training differently. Exactly. And he's 37 now, father of three. The source mentions he needs efficiency, specificity, can't just hammer endless miles anymore. Makes sense. Precision training. And for states, that big elephant in the room is the heat. Oh, absolutely. And his heat plan sounds intense. Started focus sessions 12 weeks out. 12 weeks? What did that involve? Progressing from like one hour sessions up to two or three hours, three, four times a week often at 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, 105. But what's really interesting is how he tracks if it's working. It's not just gutting it out. No, not at all. He's tracking very specific physiological things. Sweat loss, for instance. How much are we talking? Get this up to 2.5 liters in just two hours sometimes. It's wild. Plus sodium loss, and critically, increases in plasma volume. Okay, plasma volume. For listeners, why is that the key indicator? What does that tell him? Good question. Um, basically, more plasma volume means your blood is more dilute, less thick, so it's easier for your body to shunt blood to the skin to cool off your sweating, and it keeps blood flowing better to the working muscles. It's a real sign of, you know, physiological adaptation to heat. Got it. That's some serious data track. And it's not just lab stuff, right? There's that specific long run. The 50 miler, about a month before the race, done intentionally dehydrated. Dehydrated. Started about a kilo lighter. No fluids for the first two hours. The idea was to simulate race day stress late in the race and test how his whole system held up. And he's still banged out nearly 50 miles, almost 8,000 feet of climbing, and under 6.15, that's something else. And a recent PB on his local steep climb, Nisaxla. He linked that performance to the uh, biological inertia of training stimuli. Meaning the training effects are deep, systemic, not just surface level fitness. Exactly. Now, this next part is super practical, I think, for anyone listening his recovery philosophy. Ah, uh, yes, recovery. Because all that hard work needs support. What's his take? It's refreshingly simple, honestly. The source says he stresses the most effective and cheapest things. Good sleep, quality nutrition. And quality nutrition for him means thinking about how food is produced, avoiding processed stuff. Yep, exactly that. And managing stress and load. He explicitly says, according to the article, all the fancy tools, forget them. Huh. Love that. So stress management isn't just training stress, it's life stress too, like prioritizing family, saying no. That seems to be the implication. It's all connected. And this focus on fundamentals carries over to how he monitors his body beyond just the watch. Right, those post-workout checks you mentioned, like saliva osmolality, PPH, what's that about? They're snapshot indicators checked after key sessions. They give him clues about hydration status, recovery needs, maybe muscle damage or metabolic stress. It's looking at the response. So data after the fact, not just during the run. And sweat tests too for sodium, especially in the heat. Dialing in that electrolyte replacement, it all seems to feed into this core idea he developed with his physiologist. Performance is the maximum expression of health. That's powerful. Performance is health, expressed fully. And it flips the script a bit. You can pile on training, but if your body's fighting underlying issues, inflammation, or gut health, mitochondria not great at using carbs, you won't adapt properly. 